<laughs> there are several lines of evidence from the text of Revelation 3, 3 to 5, which support the eternal rewards interpretation. Revelation 3, 3 to 5. Large contribute over, over this, so pay attention. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard, and keep it, and repent. If therefore you will not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come upon you. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments, and they walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be, thus be clothed in white garments. I, I will not erase his name from the book of life. Surely I will not, because he's been faithful. And I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Then say, I'll have eternal life. Notice, I will come upon you as a thief. Verse 3 is a warning. If you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know the hour I will come upon you. This calls to watchfulness in light of the Lord's imminent return as a thief are found in several other places in the New Testament. Salvation isn't in view in any of those places. Rather, they deal with the prospect of eternal rewards. Matthew 24, 45-51, 25-1-13, 1 Peter 5, 1-11. Take a look at 1 Peter 5, 1-11. So in Thess 5, 1.10, a context dealing, oops, excuse me, while I'm opening this, dealing with Christ's return. As a thief in the night, Paul wrote, Christ died for us, that whatever we wake, whether we wake or sleep, we should love together with him. In context, waking was used metaphorically to mean walking in the light, being sober, faithful, and loving. Waking is the same word translated as watch, Revelation 3.3 and 1 Thess 5.6. On the other hand, sleeping meant to walk in the darkness, to be drunk, unfaithful, and unloving. Ephesians 5, 1 to 17, especially verse 14, is comparative. Paul was saying that all believers will be raptured, whether they are morally alert or asleep when Christ returns for them. The believer who is morally asleep when Christ returns is not overcoming. Yet he will, we will, he will live together with him as well. They are worthy, Bob Wilkin continues. Verse 4 reads, You have a few names even in Sardis who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The worthiness here is linked to the fact that these were believers who have not defiled their garments. Garments. Clearly, Jesus isn't praising them for using tide on their togs. That is a figurative way of saying that there were a few who had not walked in disobedience. Revelation 22.14 and James 1.27 and Jude 23. Walking with Christ in white garments must be seen as a reward. Otherwise, Christ is teaching salvation by works here. We know from Jesus' teachings and from the entire Bible that no one but Christ is worthy to be in God's kingdom because of his or her deeds. We are only worthy to enter God's kingdom because we have trusted in the worthy one. This is a compelling proof that the issue here is not salvation, but rewards. He shall be clothed in white dark garments. Walking goes on. Verse 5 refers again to being clothed in white. The Lord makes it clear that the person in question is an overcomer. While some assume that all Christians will wear these white garments in the kingdom, this verse suggests that only overcoming believers, those who haven't defiled their garments, will wear these garments in the kingdom. This verse suggests that believers will not be clothed identically in the kingdom. Some will wear special white garments, these special garments will signify that the wearer is one who honored Christ until the end of his or her Christian experience. Peter, James, and John caught a glimpse of what these glorious garments will be like when Jesus was transfigured before them. His face, his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. It may well be that the brightness of an overcomer's clothes will be proportional to how Christ-like he or she was in this life. I will confess his name. 
This is rewards language. Jesus will acknowledge faithful believers before the Father and before his angels. Matthew 10, 32 to 33 and Luke 19, 11 to 19. He will say, well done, good servant. Good and faithful servant. This is a reward that faithful believers will receive and is not a condition of entrance into the kingdom. And will blot out his name. Several things should be observed in relation to this expression. First, whatever it means, it can't contradict other scripture or the clear meaning of the rest of the passage of other and of other scripture. Second, many read it as though it says, Her who doesn't he who doesn't overcome, I will blot out his name. Okay, take out the her. She or he. Who does not overcome, I will blot out his name. It doesn't say that. It is important to note that this verse doesn't say anything about the faith of those who don't overcome. It certainly doesn't say that God will blot the non-overcomer's name out of the book of life. The focus here is on the overcomer, not on the non-overcomer. If I said all fathers are men, that wouldn't mean that the opposite is true, that all men are fathers. There are men who aren't fathers. In the same way the car related to out to our verse is not true. God will not blot out the name of the non-overcoming believer from the book of life. Not believing at the end of your life will. Once, actually, yeah, once a person has spiritual life, it can never be taken away. Third, there is a well-established figure of speech called litotes, or understatement. In this figure of speech, a positive point is made by denying its opposite. For example, imagine that a loving, committed mother said to his teenage son, If you mow the lawn, the yard today, I, will send, I won't send you to bed without dinner. Let's assume that the mother had previously guaranteed him that she would never, never, would never send him to bed without supper. He would thus know that the, even if he didn't mow the yard, he would get dinner. But surely he won't get, uh, will get his dinner should he mow the lawn. His mom was promising him a special meal if he mowed the lawn. Just like rewards. So too when the Lord says that he won't blot out the name of the overcoming believer from the book of life. He means that he will give the overcomer a special fullness of life forever. We know some of what this superlative experience will include. Wearing special white garments. Ruling with Christ. Eating the fruit of the tree of life. Eating hidden manna. And receiving a white stone engraved with your own special name that only the Lord and you will know. None of these things is equivalent to eternal salvation. None of these things is required for kingdom entrance. These are all rewards awaiting the overcoming believer. We don't know all that is in store for the overcoming believer, but from what we are told in the seven letters, we know that it will be something no one will want to miss. William Fuller, who defends this understanding of Revelation 3.5, writes, A command that everyone keeps is superfluous, and a reward that everyone receives for a virtue that everyone has is nonsense. The eternal rewards interpretation takes the command seriously, views the reward as a powerful motivation to obedience, and doesn't distort the gospel. Conclusion. The Lord Jesus Christ wants every believer to overcome the world by living a faithful Christian life until he returns or until death. He promises special rewards for the Christian who overcomes. Those rewards run include a special fullness of life and alluded to in the understatement, he who overcomes and will not flatter his name from the book of life. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. All believers have and will forever have life, eternal life. Only over overcoming believers have and will forever have life more abundantly. That's in Galatians 6. Paul echoed the same theme when he ended his letter to the Galatians with these words, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Other rewards for faithful believer? You can take a look at it. Here's some notes. And we're done with this study.